Welcome back to the Am Sam Radio, the podcast for creators. This I, Football Boys, the mayor in the mayor's office with an author of a book I just finished reading. It's called The Puck Stops Here, written by Stephen Black under his pen name, Philip Stevens. Stephen Black, I wanted to welcome you to the show. How are you doing today, sir? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a the pleasure is all mine. You know what? I'm always a, up for stories about Brooklyn, me being a Brooklyn native myself. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, born and raised. Man. I lived in Flatland, so that's on okay. the other side. Flatbush, you can side by St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the part of Brooklyn I'm from. <laughs> okay. I went to Erasmus Hall High School for two years. Oh, yeah. I went to Madison. So that's, oh, that's good for you. Yeah, yeah. Me and Bernie Sanders were high-fiving each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, so walk me through. There's a puck stop here. What's it about? Well, it's about uh, the relationship between a stockbroker in Dallas, Texas, and a professional hockey player who was playing on a farm team for the Toronto Maple Leafs in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. and how he became a client of John Drake, who's the main character in the book, along with Dayton Hudson, who's the hockey professional hockey player. And yeah. it talks about their relationship and the difficulties that incurred because of that relationship uh, because of the law in the United States regarding controlled substances. Mm -hmm. uh, John was on the wrong side of the law and spent a year in jail uh, before he moved to Ontario, Canada, and hooked up with uh, Dayton Hudson again. And they built a business together, which, uh, which was extremely successful. But they had their difficulties during that time. And it goes on to talk about that relationship and the relationship between John and a fellow broker who happens to be a woman who he yeah. worked for in Canada. So that's pretty much the, uh, the, uh, the setup of the book. Yeah. And what was the, the first uh, inciting incident that made you say, look, this story needs to be told on paper? Well, being a hockey fan and being an ex-stockbroker myself, I thought the two would make an extremely interesting story. And so I wrote the book and I dreamed up the relationship and the difficulties that the two of them had during the relationship and in the, and in the book. And it just makes a, a page turner. The chapters are very short. So you can turn a page after reading one and a half pages or two pages to the next chapter. Yeah. Was that by design? Did you want to make a short chapter book to have yes, that readability? Okay. I did because uh, you could put the book down after reading three or four chapters and get back to reading the book again, not missing anything with the short chapters. So yeah. I thought it worked well with the people that have read the book. They thought I was on the right track in making the chapters short as they were. Oh, yeah. Uh, what Are you a hockey fan too? You said, uh, what team do you support? Uh, you mean in hockey? The, yeah. I support, I support the Dallas Stars. Okay. Uh, you live out there now? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, they're they're pretty solid. I'm an Islanders fan, whether <laughs> whether it's uh, heartbreaking or not. I support but the I Islanders. Used, I used to support the, that, the New York Rangers for years. Okay, yeah, the Rangers. I mean, 94 was a big, big year for New York when they won the Cup back then. That was, yeah, uh, that's right. That's the first time since 1941. Oh, absolutely. So, so were you like, John, did you play the sports growing up? Uh, that I was played, mentioned I played street hockey. Oh, yeah. Because there are very few places you could play hockey uh, in a, in a uh, practice, in, a, in, a, in an environment, in an arena. Yeah. Uh, the only arena in Brooklyn that you could practice in, the New York Rangers use that arena uh, yeah. to practice with. So it was very, sometimes in the wintertime, living near Prospect Park, I was able to play hockey on the ice, on the lake in Prospect Park. But other than that, it was a lot of street hockey. Using yeah. an orange crate as a hockey net. Yep, <laughs> that takes you back. Uh, b being a '90s kid myself, I think we're like the last generation where we played outside stick ball, right? We yeah, played stick, stick ball, ball and all of that stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, breaking windows and all that. <laughs> yeah, knocking over a woman and breaking her leg. <laughs> right, we were we were rap scallions back then. Yeah. Uh, so, so what I liked about this story is relationship, uh, not with John and the stockbroker, but definitely his brother in the beginning chapters. You know, one of the things I, I like the fact that you showed in this book that sometimes people have reasons and seasons they come and go throughout John's life. And is there any situation like that that you pulled from real life when you had John's story imparted there? Well, uh, not sure how to answer that question. Uh, 
I had, uh, I wanted to be a stockbroker when I graduated from college. Okay. But unfortunately, Merrill Lynch would not hire people right out of college. Mm. So I waited about 15 years before I went back and, and, and tried to get a job with Merrill Lynch, which I did. So I have a history in ice hockey and I have a history with Merrill Lynch over 30 years in the brokerage business. Okay. So I have a good background to talk about these two guys and the relationships that they have and the problems that occurred uh, during the, uh, the length of the book. So describe to me your writing process. Do you write every day? Is it when inspiration strikes, daytime, nighttime, between meals? What's the mix? Uh, uh, I wrote the book over six months. So oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't write every day. Uh, huh. But I did write a lot. And I usually wrote for an hour or two at a time. But then I would go back and edit what I had already written. So I'm thinking that the editing of the book took as, almost as much time as the writing of the book to be yeah. sure that I had my, my figures correct, uh, that the statements I made were pl plausible and that they made sense. Yeah, so, so six months, but how many hours a day? I'm just on average, I'm just curious. Probably a couple of hours. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I did not have an outline okay. uh, to the book. Many, many authors do have an outline in writing a book. For me, it was, for me, it was easy to write the book just from, uh, from my experience, I, I, this is the third book I've written. Mm -hmm. I've written two other books other than this one. And yeah. I gained a lot of experience by writing those two other books in the way to write and the amount of time needed to come up with a good product. So you mentioned uh, the other books, Berlin and Beyond and Charlie. Uh, what's been the difference of, of your own progression as an author if you realized going from that, those books to this one? Well, Berlin Beyond took place in the beginning of the Second World War. It was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful story. It would make a great movie if I was able to get the people in Hollywood to take a look at it. Although yeah. I think that The Puck Stops Here is a better book for a movie than, uh, than Berlin and Beyond. It tells the story of two people that go to Berlin uh, from the United States, from New Jersey, on a holiday and get caught in the beginning of World War II. And the story mm. goes on to say how they were able over a period of time to make their way back to the United States. Charlie was a children's book. It was written for kids from five to 12 years old. When I worked, I worked at the George Bush Library in Dallas for many years, and I got to know Mrs. Bush really well. She uh, made a list of 100 children's books that you would like to see in every elementary school in the United States. There were a lot of animals in the book, but there was one animal missing. So I decided to write a book about the animal that was missing. And that was Charlie the Young Unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the story of Charlie. Is there any kind of uh, a mental thing of switching between genres, of going to the no, historical it, fiction? Or? It, was, it was fairly easy. I knew yeah. what I wanted to say in Charlie. Uh, I just sat down and wrote, yeah, uh, and it was easy to do. Uh, I have a, I have a very, uh, I have, I have a photographic memory which helps a lot, uh, and my mind to be able to go from one air, from one space, space of time to another. Uh, so the books that I've written were were not difficult to write. I found them very easy. I found the most enjoyable writing. I love I loved to write. I've been writing for about 10 years. Most of the stuff I wrote were about my growing up and uh, for my grandchildren. Uh, I wanted them to have an idea who their grandfather was. So I did a lot of writing about my growing up and my career in the business world. Yeah, and what's been the reception from your grandkids and great grandkids? Are they oh, like, they, yeah. They, they said, how could, you do, how could you have done all of that? <laughs> uh, that 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 was their major response. They yeah. loved my work ethic. Uh, oh yeah, I learned that from my father. Uh, he had a wonderful work ethic. He worked six days a week as a butcher, believe it or not. So he worked really hard, and I learned my work ethic from him. I've always yeah. had that 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 work ethic. I have I have a um, uh, a great source of uh, work ethic and success. Uh, in my life, 
and uh, I was a long distance runner. I ran over 20 marathons. Wow. So I've had the experience of being there every day training and yeah. looking at my success in training and the races that I've run. So my experience has been pretty broad. Wait, 20, like 20 marathons, like 20 full length marathons. I ran 27 marathons. Well, first of all, wow, congratulations, because I can't even run one of those. And two, what do you do for exercise now? Because I feel like that's something you just don't stop. Right? Well, I work out I work out every day at the gym where I live, Okay. Uh, about an hour a day. I usually take Sunday off because I go to church on Sunday. Yeah. So I can't go to the gym early in the morning like I'm used to Monday through Saturday. Yeah. So I so stay in pretty good shape. In fact, I just had my physical, and the doctor said, you're eating too much sugar. So I said, okay. So I stopped eating sugar and lost 10 pounds. Wow. That's a, call that body hacking, right? <laughs> you yeah, just unlock so, the key. <laughs> yeah. So I, I am uh, I'm very goal oriented, as you can imagine. My mm -hmm. whole life has been that way. And I've set various goals, not only in my business life, but in my personal life. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the your books out on sale now, what, what do you want to accomplish? More books, sequels, and travel? What do you I'm, want to I'm do? Really, I'm really not sure. Um, I would like to give it a go on the puck stops here as much as I can in yeah. terms of making it a readable book for people to buy. Because I think it's a great story and it reads really well. It is a page turner. Yeah. Did you have a favorite character in the book that you wanted to share more about? Well, my favorite character in the book has got to be the hockey player. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it, having read the book, you know what he's gone through in order to make the business go with his partner, John Drake. Yeah. Although I love John, and the book was about John, the early part of it. But uh, I, I really, I really uh, got, to, got to appreciate uh, Dayton Hudson's uh, uh, task in... He had to borrow money to make the business work. He took mm -hmm. a great risk in doing that, and mm -hmm. he paid the price for it. Absolutely. The sacrifices we all make, right? So there were a lot of sacrifices in the book on all sides. Yeah. I do, I do enjoy the relationship between John and Sarah, because she was a, a major stockbroker in, in Canada, and John coming from being a stockbroker in the United States, he never told her about that until they were engaged about yeah. all the problems that he had and the work that he did. So I think Sarah was an important part in his life. Yeah, you can totally see the chemistry between the two of them, even as they take their time to reveal aspects about themselves to each other. I mean, the, the heat, I guess. <laughs> the yeah. sparks were already there. If That's so much true. <laughs> yeah. You got well, that no, right. A lot of people that are listening onto the show are, are authors or aspiring authors themselves, and they may have a day job or have to meddle with the kids or they have other responsibilities, but it's been about the motivation. Now, you mentioned that you are a goal-oriented person, but if you have any tips of advice to help people push through on days where they're not sure they can make it or create, what would you have for them? Well, I think you have to have a, 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 a understanding of what success means. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always mean that you meet your goal to be successful. Sometimes you set goals too high and then you fail in your goal, but you can have a success from that because you understand that you set your, your goals too high. So what I would say to young people, no matter what they were doing in their career, be, be sensible about the goals that you set. Don't make them too high so that you find yourself not being successful. That's true words have been spoken. Uh, the Puck Stops here, available now on Amazon by Philip Stevens. And what, what I like about it also, there's also the Kindle version, if you can watch or listen, read it on the go, excuse me, or the paperback version, if you'd like to have the tactile book there. Do you have a preference? How do you consume your books? Are you old school or are you new school? Yes. <laughs> You're just all of them? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I enjoyed like visiting with you. And I hope that some people understand the the uh, the book and what it means, and the and the uh, wanting to read the book because it is a page turner, and I think most people appreciate the story plot. Absolutely. And if uh, someone's reading that book and they're inspired by the puck stops here, is there any way to contact you or connect with you to learn more? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the phone book, in Dallas, <laughs> Texas. 
but the phone book doesn't work anymore because we don't have landlines anymore. We just basically have uh, cell phones. But I can be reached on my email address, which is sblack, S-B-L-A-C-K, 8561 at AOL.com. Or you can reach me through West Point Publishing because they have all the information about who I am and where I am. They've done a great job in publishing my book, and I appreciate all the time they've spent helping me. Thanks.